All right, so back with another video. So uh, as I've already already tested many, many CPUs on the X299 Dark, I really wanted to give like one final attempt with the best possible memory controller on all of the X299 CPUs that I've had on the X299 Dark and see how high could, I could push the memories and where I actually get the best performance at. So, uh, so far, uh, among all of the CPUs that I've had, the best IMC or integrated memory controller has been on the original 12 core Skylake X CPU, the 7920X. Uh, the silicon lottery thing, it's not only about the actual uh, like quality, quality difference between the actual core of different CPU samples, there's actually a lot of quality difference between the uh, between different CPU samples in terms of IMC as well. So some CPUs can push memories a lot more higher than others. So that's quite common. And uh, so far with this particular CPU, I had the best possible uh, frequencies out from my uh, tested memory kits. The uh, score built so it pointed out on the Gamers Nexus channel like two years ago was 4133 megahertz with 12, 11, 11 timings on this particular motherboard over here. But of course, the uh, memory score wasn't like the absolute best in that test because I had the uh, sub timings like relatively loose, not that tight. So it uh, uh, made the score a bit worse than what it could be. So now I just want to give like one try where the best performance is actually at. So usually I've been running uh, for all of the Skylake X CPUs out there for like like proper benchmarking tests, I've been running the memories pretty much all the time at 300 megahertz with 12, 11 timing, 12, 11, 11 timings with tight sub timings or 12, 11 and 10. And I still, I still think I have the highest X299 memory score still ever. It was 11,200 or 300 something, either on the 17RX or one of the 18 core chips. But uh, the thing about the memory score in Geekbench is that it goes up when your CPU, CPU speed goes up as well. So you can't really compare the memory score against each other if the CPU speed is dramatically different. So uh, you cannot get 11,000 plus on air or water cooling because it requires really high memory, sp I mean CPU speed, but yeah, so just for you to know. So on this test, the uh, for this testing, the rig is pretty much the same as with 10980XC, so uh, 12 core Skylake X, 4 sticks of Samsung B die, 2, two sticks of 4133 Cas19 Trident C, and uh, the naked sticks are 3600 Cas17. So uh, 32 GB, this combination seems to work quite well. Galax 710 GT, Superflow 2000 Watt power supply, and custom water cooling loop with parked custom IHS on top of the CPU, although I'm, I will not be testing the CPU at the absolute max this time, so it doesn't really matter. But yeah, so without further ado, let's get started. All right, so here I'm in the bars, so uh, just I will use just quite safe 48 uh, CPU core multiplier and 33 on the mesh. Uh, I've disabled extreme cooling mode, but yeah, 1.9 input, 1.3 V core, Actually, I will drop that to 1.25 just to uh, save some heat. 1.35 on the mesh. Same on SA and IO and uh, plus 400 on the uh, internal memory controller offset. And I will start with the memory settings I was so close on passing with the 10980XC. So 3800, 12, 10, 9, 24 and tight sub timings. I, will, I just want to see it straight from the get-go that is this stable just purely out of interest UEFI CPU config is same I will change this to CPU VRM this is actually one my safe LN2 profile let's try that
all right so now in the os we can open cpu-z and geekbench 3 so let's just purely out of interest let's see 12 10 9 i i up the uh, trfc to 200 just for this purpose now i'll keep core temp open to follow the temperatures so it's running temps okay so maybe the uh, the uh, trcd limit is stick based so we can try other combination instead so uh, well yeah trcd of 10 is quite hard even at 3800 so uh, could be just the sticks but yeah okay so that is a very fast score in uh, Geekbench 3 at 4000, 12, 11, 11, and 28 TRAS. So I I uh, loosened a bit and just started. So uh, this isn't easy on many uh, Skylake X or newer CPUs. So I will, I will try to lower this now a bit. There's no 4133 multiplier. So the next multiplier is actually 4200. And it's very hard to post, as you would guess. But so for, for now, 4,000, not that impressive memory score actually, 10,165, so it's behind uh, uh, what I got with the 1090XE, so let's try a bit more. And here I have uh, the same memory frequency passed in the Geekbench 3, but with timings of 12, 11, 10, 28, 240, and tight sub timings, but the score still isn't that like epic only like 10,200. So still uh, almost 300 points behind the Cascade Lake X at 3,800. So uh, it's not just about the uh, raw frequency and main timings. So uh, it's good, but I, you could expect better if you ask me. So let's see. Okay, I might try uh, 4,200 or something similar next. Okay, this is quite nice to see. So now I actually put it into the operating system at 4200, 12, 11, 11, 28, TRFC 280. Most of the third timings are at auto. So uh, this is not very efficient at all. I just want to see uh, like how high I can, I, I could actually push the main timings, but they aren't all. So uh, it doesn't matter if the uh, frequency goes up a lot, if the overall performance and efficiency comes down dramatically. So uh, that's why it's best to find the sweet spot where you can uh, tighten most of the sub timings and main timings where you don't have to sacrifice too much frequency. I'm sure this will crash. There's no doubt about it. It will not pass. So yeah, now it crashed. So very like barely goes to the operating system, but doesn't matter. It was nice to see anyways. So far, can bench somewhere uh, like most of the time at 4000. But, anyways, all, it always seems to be the best at around like 3800 for most of the CPUs, even the 7920X. But, yeah. Here we have a score. So, it's not that good. Score of 10,021. At. Uh, well, the main timings are good, but I, I'm not sure what is the limit, limiting factor for the score. So the timings are 11, 11, 11, 28, 240 at 3800. So CAS 11 seems very good. Two volts spot on on the memory. And there's definitely enough memory for this test in the system. So uh, I have typed 8000 in Microsoft config. So yeah. 10,021. Of course, it always goes up. It always goes up with uh, CPU speed. So when you run CPU on LN2, when the frequencies are much higher, the memory score goes up a lot, like 1,000 points. So the best ambient result so far has been the, uh, well, almost 10,500 on the 10980XC. So I will show these settings. What I just passed. 3800, 2 volts, 11, 11, 11, 28, 466, 49. And then uh, quite good on the sub timings. 
So I will, I will try. We'll try a little bit tighter over here. See how it goes. Twelve on a for active window. Save and exit. And here I have a passed score at three seven thirty three megahertz with. Uh, 11, 10, 10, 28, 180 common rate 1 timings. And all of the sub timings are pretty much as tight as possible, like 4 active window of 12, really tight third timings, and so on. And the score is only 10,075. So it's really all of the attempts I try to do, the overall gain is like pretty much nothing compared to the sweet spot timing configuration at 3800, 12, 11, 11. So really, I don't see like any point on trying to uh, go for any other combination than that. You can go for 4,000, maybe even above 4,000, 12, 11, 11. But often you have to sacrifice many of the sub timings and your overall performance will just go down. So uh, it's a saying. So yeah, pretty much no matter if it's 2D or 3D, I would just really shoot for the uh, sweet spot of 3,000 megahertz with 12, 11, 11 and really nice uh, sub timings. I have shown my timing table many times already on a few of the videos, so uh, you get the idea, I think. And this is the uh, profile I've used the most so 3800, 12, 11, 11, 26, 240, and uh, the uh, sub timing table I've showed many times. And it's really so that the score doesn't really matter. I mean, the score doesn't really differ like almost at all. So no matter if the memories are at 3800, 12, 11, 11, or 3733, 11, 10, 10, or 4000, 12, 11, 11, or above 4000, the uh, differences in the memory score are very, very small. The higher you can get your CPU, the higher the CPU, the higher the memory score. So uh, at 4.8 gigahertz, I got a memory score of 9960. And now at 4.9 gigahertz, I got a memory score of 10,103 and I have to remember when I ran the uh, tests with Cascade Lake X 1090DXE there the CPU was running 5.1 gigahertz so it explains the high memory score so uh, the highest I've ever seen on any uh, user has been my uh, I think it was with 1700X it was not fully sure if it was 1700X but some X299 CPU and the memory score was like 11,200 something. It's, prob it's pretty much, I think, the highest memory score ever on X299. But yeah, so that's, I think that's pretty much the end. So uh, if you are, if you want to run any like really tough like benchmarking or overclocking on X299, really just test out and see what works the best for you. But overall, when it comes to X299 boards, 3800, 12, 11, 11 is usually very good, like sweet spot. Try that and try to get the sub timings as tight as possible. If 3800 is too hard, try 3600 and 3733. For, ex for example, when looking at many of uh, the Splave's top scores with uh, X299 CPUs, he often just runs the memories at 3600 only. It doesn't really matter that much, actually. It's quite funny. But yeah, try uh, multipliers from 3600 all the way up to 4000 plus. If you get good uh, performance at 4000 or even above that, then of course, of course that is good. But at least based on my testing, 3800 is really, really, really nice. On uh, 3647, many motherboards, you have to go a bit lower on the memory frequency with all six memory channels. But yeah. So that's the end. So if you like to see these results with X299 Dark, then please give a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time.